That sounds great to me. Let's do a little test. I'm so indecisive. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Lightfoot FX. I'm your host Jay Lightfoot and today we're going to be doing the first video of a three-part series about the Universal Audio amp modeling pedals. I know there's a lot of videos out there that are doing reviews on how those pedals sound and how they work. I figured I'll do a little twist on it. We will review a different pedal in each video out of the three. There's the Ruby, the Dream, and the Woodrow. And what I'm going to do is for this video, I'm gonna focus on the Ruby. And instead of doing a full review on it, we'll review it and I will show you how I would dial in this pedal for live use. We're gonna review the Ruby and then I'm gonna show you how to set it up for a live situation, what works for me, and the same principles that could be applied to really any AC30 type model or in a pedal format. So these should carry over similarly to like the Dryman Iridium or the Walrus ACS1, but we'll focus on the Ruby for it. With that all said, let's jump right into it. For this video, I'm thinking we'll do two different types. I'll start with a single coil guitar, like this Nash T52 Tele with the Lawler pickups. This will be a great way to test a guitar that has single coils and see how you would dial in an AC30 for live use for this guitar. And then we'll do a test with how I would dial in for a humbucker guitar. Something like this Veritas here. This has Lindy Fralin modern PAFs in it. They're a pretty balanced pickup. These will be more close to what you'd have in probably like a Gibson Les Paul or really any standard PAF type guitar. We'll hear both sides of how I would dial in the Ruby. With that said, let's get into it. We'll start with the Tele. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, this is the Universal Audio Ruby. This is their modeler that's based off of a classic AC30, one of the first AC30s ever made. So this model has a top boost or a normal channel. The top boost channel did not exist on the old AC30s. They just had a normal channel. So what Universal Audio did is they added the top boost from an old AC30 from when they first added those. So you can kind of switch between them. They're both vintage amps. When you switch between them, you're not getting the same amp. You're getting a voicing of, you know, the one with the top boost and then the one before that that didn't have the top boost. I'll go into the pedal a little bit, but this video is really to focus on how to dial it in, how I set it up for a live situation. To start here, there are three different speakers. You got the green, the blue, and the silver. The green speaker is gonna be darker speaker that doesn't have as many highs. It has a little more mid-range. The blue speaker is more of your signature Brian May sounding AC30. It's gonna be the brightest you can be. It's gonna have the most cleans. And then the silver is kind of a good balance between them. I like to use the green if I'm playing a guitar with single coils because it can tame the top end. And then I will go to the blue if I'm usually playing a guitar with humbuckers or something that's darker and I need more brightness. There are two modes here. You've got amp and then alt. If I switch it to alt, this will let you change the amount of room so you can have room simulation. So let's, before we even get into that, let's see how it sounds. I'm gonna go to the green speaker. I'll turn the knob to about here. This gets me about right where I wanna be for my type of mixes. Let's hear how it sounds. This is in that Nash T52 Tele. <laughs> Okay, right off the bat, once again, that's me on the green. If I were to switch it to the blue, you'll hear the difference. It got a little more jangly and a little bit more bright. One thing I noticed is I have the bass cranked on here, so I'll fix that. What this does, since the AC30 is in the old days, turning it right won't give you more bass. These are actually cut knobs, so turning it left gives you more bass. Turning the treble to the right gives you less treble. You do the opposite. So usually I run them about here to start with as a good reference. So we'll hear that now. So once again, that's with the blue speaker. That's gonna be the brighter one. Let's go to the green. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and try out the silver. The silver kind of has its own sound, in my opinion, that's kind of between them. I'm set to the bright channel right now. The bright is gonna be the AC30 with the EQ. If you go to normal, this will be as if I switched to the other AC30 that only has the normal channel. Those AC30s used to be really dark. 
You can hear the difference already. The EQ stops working. So what you have to do is use the cut knob. The cut knob becomes your EQ. If I turn it all the way to the dark, to the right, it gets darkest. All the way to the left opens it up, gets me all those frequencies back. If I were to use the normal channel, I would leave probably the cut all the way wide open because otherwise I think it's just even here, it's cutting too much frequencies out. It just feels a little too muffled. And then I'd probably even increase the volume to give it more gain. This axe is just increasing the volume on the amp to give you more overdrive. You can hear it distorting more. And then when I roll it back, it's all clean. That's pretty much it for the normal channel. I never use that because it's just too dark. I like having the EQ in there. So when I play, I just leave it on brilliant up here. You'll hear the buzzing come back in because it's a, the way the circuit's set up is different. It does have a lot more 60 cycle hum as we call it because I'm using a single coil guitar. Tellies are loud, man. This here's a boost. Depending which channel of amp I select, it'll change how the boost works. So on the brilliant, here's the boost. Here, here it is clean. Here it is when I crank the boost. That's without the boost. Same thing, normal channel. Here's the boost up. That's gonna be the Brian May sound right there. He would play the normal channel, not the brilliant, and he would just shove it with a boost pretty much. I think it was called a range master, trouble booster. And then down here, vibrato. This is another type of boost they throw in on the vibrato circuit. The thing about the vibrato is it's no different than the normal. You only use the cut knob still. All it does is it turns the treble and the bass into a vibrato pretty much, like a tremolo type effect. You have to switch this knob up to alt. Alt means that it's gonna work with any of these knobs that have that color above them. That little, like this says speed, this says intensity, the other one says room. So now we'll hear that tremolo-y vibrato effect. Once I turn this up, pretty cool if you've ever played ac 30s a lot of them have that built in as well and then this is the room knob you'll hear it if i crank it it this isn't a reverb, by the way. This is supposed to sound like the amp is in the room. So it's supposed to trick you. If you're someone who plays using IEMs or headphones, like on a stage, and you turn this up just a little bit, it's supposed to give you the sound like a mic'd amp to trick your brain, like to hear that room sound. So let's hear it. We'll exaggerate it here. That sounds just like the back room at our church when I would crank amps back there. I would get that exact sound in my in-ears. It's crazy. Uh, I think though with effects, that sound can just get muddy. So I don't even have it on. But if you're someone who hates the amp modeling stuff, you might like having that up a little bit. Another pedal that has this is the Iridium. That's exactly what its room knob is doing. And then the ACS-1, same thing. Uh, the Iridiums is, and the ACS-1, yeah. Same thing, just turn the room knob up and you should get that effect. They did it really well on the Ruby. It sounds like it's in that big amp room at the church I play at. One thing I forgot to mention is the Ruby. I'm going mono in to the Ruby and then it's coming out stereo. So I got two jacks and then they're going into my Walrus Audio Canvas. And then from there it's going into my Universal Audio Apollo Twin X. The reason I'm running this is in stereo is it seems like a lot of people do this review with it in mono. So I figured let's just see how it sounds stereo. I have the guitar going to the input jack and then I have it coming out stereo. And what this pedal does in stereo is it makes a second amp and it's tuned to sound a little different. So they're both tuned to have a slightly different EQ to sound like two unique amps that aren't exactly the same. So kind of cool. Uh, a few other things, this is, you know, on, on and then off. 
You can save a preset here. If I flick this switch to the down position, it'll save the preset. And then there's actually an app you can use to recall the presets. So I make a setting for every guitar and then I just recall them when I'm about to play. So one thing I wanna let you know is that I run this into a preamp. It's going into my Universal Audio Apollo Twin X. And, and what I like to do is I turn the preamp all the way down on it. And then from there, I crank the output as high as it can go without it clipping my speakers. The reason I do this is this gives me a good amount of headroom that I can adjust. That lets me increase this without clipping my system. And that means I will have that much more of this to give to a venue so that they don't have to put their preamps up high. I can give them so much volume that they won't need to compensate as much with their preamps. My thought process behind this is if they have a crappy preamp, I don't have to rely on it as much because mine is giving a lot more output. I can give them a lot of output to the board and then that just lets them use less preamps if the sound system's not as good or the preamp is terrible. Really though, you can set this wherever you want. That's just how I do it. I have the Apollo, like I said, the preamps on 10. That's like the lowest it can go. And then I just have the actual output of the Apollo pretty cranked and I run it as loud as I can through my monitors, almost close enough to where there's a real amp in the room. What this allows is it kicks in the Fletcher Munson. If you're not sure what the Fletcher Munson principle is, it is that the louder a sound, the more highs that you will perceive come out of it. So if I dial in my sound with the sound turned really loud and I get the right amount of highs, chances are if I play at a venue where they're pumping, you know, if it's, if it's really loud, like a big stadium and they're, they're wanting to push you really loud, you'll get the right frequencies because you had a blasting in your room. That's just how I do it. If they run you pretty quiet, it's gonna sound a lot muddier and not as clear, but if they boost you pretty loud, like they should, if it's a big venue, your highs will come through just how they were when you set it up. Hopefully that makes sense. Feel free to comment if you have any questions about that. With that said, let's get into it. Okay, so I've already went ahead and rewired the Ruby back onto my pedal board. We're just running the Ruby by itself. The Dream is sitting here, but it's all totally unhooked. I have the stereo signal going into the Ruby, and then it's going into the canvas here, which is then going into the Universal Audio Apollo Twin X. And we'll start dialing it in how I would. So this is all from the pedal board. I start with having everything off. I leave my compressor on though. If you don't have a compressor, you don't have to worry about it. You would just dial it in with everything off. Just give your clean signal in. Okay, so that's sitting around nine, where I like it, the negative nine on your volume meter, if you're plugged into some sort of DAW. So I'm gonna mess around with it. I'm gonna try and get it to the edge of breakups. So we'll mess with the volume first. I'll be doing a lot of this chord progression over and over because that's what gives me a feel for how the amps are set. I want it set in a way where I can play light and it's clean still, but I want it to be, you know, driven when I dig in. That's pretty close. So what we would do to change that is a little more volume. This is giving me less headroom though, but it's also giving me more gain in the amp. So more drive, essentially. Let's try it now. That sounds pretty good. Here's what it would sound like if I gave it more. Let's just over exaggerate it. If I went up here. It's super gainy, but all it is is mush. There's no room to work with. That'll work with a certain style of music. The way I like to play though, I want that more edge of breakup sound. So I'm gonna switch it back, back to around here. All right, so that's with the cut up. This is where I get nitpicky. I still think that there's a little too many highs coming through. The best way to get those highs out of there is I'll roll the treble back a bit, and then we'll try it. Another thing we can do is turn the cut a little more. This will cut off the high, high frequencies. If you're ever turning the treble and you're finding it's cutting too much and you're just wanting to cut just a tad, you can also use the cut knob. That'll cut off just the very top end 
the ice pickiness sometimes. That sounds pretty good. So what we'll do now is I like to give it a little more low end. I just want to hear how it changes. I'll start without it. That was way too much bass. So honestly, all right, anywhere from noon, a little more to over here sounds great. I'll sometimes play, and then as the chord rings out, I'll turn the knob and see if how if I can detect the frequency changing. In my studio, the, I hear the bass really having an effect around here, so I'll keep it just a little under so that I don't hear the bass pushing too hard. And then we'll do the same thing with the treble. Probably roll it off right around there. And then what I will do is I'll test it with some overdrive and I'll test it with some heavy gain. I want to see how it responds. So this is my first stage. This is the Benson. And then we got the kilt. I'd probably open the cut just a little more. I think we can let a little more highs through, just the upper highs. All right, and then what I'll do is I'll test the neck pickup. We'll see how clean that can get still. That sounds great. the boost and then you know you can always roll the tone back if this were to get too bright on the spot I just rolled the tone a little bit down could probably even go with a little more gain that sounds great to me let's do a little test could still get those clean neck sounds. Sounds great for the telly. Let's jump over to a guitar with humbuckers now. Okay, here we are with the Veritas. And once again, this has the Lindy Fralin modern PAF, so they're just a good balanced PAF. We'll redial in the pedal with this. This this is kind of how I do it with you know a humbucker guitar. So here it is with the tele settings. That doesn't sound too bad, but we can make it better. I'm gonna see where it's at with the gain. It's pretty much in that negative nine area still. Maybe just a little more. And what we'll do is adjust this gain here. And then I may even go to the blue speakers, just for fun. We'll see how those sound. So you can see a drastic change. Definitely needs more volume. Once again, I'm trying to get that edge of breakup sound. Too much, I think, somewhere around here. 
This is new ground for me guys. This is the first time I've played this guitar with the Ruby and then I've never played it with the Dream yet either so this is the first time I'm hearing how it sounds with these. Because this is a blue and I know they're naturally bright I would crank the bass a little more and bring the, the trebles down and then definitely probably leave the cut right around where it was. We'll try that. I'm still getting a high frequency. I feel like the top can be shaved off a little bit. Okay, so we got some of that top end off. We can turn the cut a little more to bring it more down. And then we'll bring up the gain a little bit. I'm gonna take some of the bass back. It feels a little muddy. take some of that down. I'll bring the cut back a little now. I'm gonna bring some of the treble back in too. Definitely go up a little more in the game. I'm gonna bring the cut down a little bit. I'm still hearing just a bit of a high end sound that I'm trying to get rid of. I'm just testing those higher notes. I'll cut it a little bit more. So there's a balance of once you get your bridge pickup dialed in, depending on the guitar, your neck could get a little muddier. Because as you bring the highs down to make the bridge sound great, uh, you can lose some clarity in the neck. So it's kind of a, you got to find the best meet in the middle option. Or that's how I set it up anyways. Let's see if we can go more gain. See, it's still pretty clean if I play light. Maybe not, I'll bring it down a little more. I'm so indecisive. Bring it down just a little more. This is right around where I would start. This is the edge of breakup. I'd probably be fine with this. Let's try it out. We'll play with some reverb and delay. with it a little more. I think I've decided to ultimately bring the cut in a little bit more, pull the bass back a tad, and then pull the treble back a tad. Or yeah, pull the treble back a tad. I just got confused. Pull the treble this way, take some out. <laughs> the game test. So it's starting to blow up a little bit and get a little, uh, the more gain you increase, the more output, so more highs tend to come through. So to make compensate, I'd probably bring the treble down just a tad more and the cut down just a little bit more, or cut it more. We'll try that. <laughs> 
and go back to something high. That was the kilt, by the way, on the stage two. <laughs> Yeah, that's how I run the Ruby, whether I would have something with humbuckers or something like a Telecaster. It's really just a lot of trial and error. There is no wrong answer. That's just how I would set it. One thing to notice about these amps compared to like the Iridium or the ACS-1 and something I'm finding is they do so well at modeling that they even come with all the flaws of the real amps. Like I've noticed they, they even get to the point where depending how the gain is set, certain knobs don't feel like they're doing anything or they might stop at 12 and not change as you go further. And that's kind of how like a real AC30 is. Some of you may not like, you know, the universal audio effects because of that. They don't have that polished studio sound. If you're looking for an amp that has that polished out of the box sound where you don't have to do any special mixing or mastering at the soundboard, you may want to try out something like the Iridium or the ACS-1. I think where these shine is they are really for someone who is so used to real amps. They want all the flaws of the real amp. Something where you might have to cut certain frequencies out, or you might have to do like a high pass or a low pass filter, where other things like the Iridium, I don't feel like you need to do that right out of the box. So that's just my opinion. I love these because of the way they sound and how they react like a real amp, but some people may not love them because they may not be used to that real amp mic'd up into the in-ear feeling but yeah that's the ruby it's a great pedal this was the first video of our three-part series the next video we're gonna do will be the dream and then i got one for the woodrow and then my personal preference of course is running one of each i like to run these in stereo these with the ruby and the dream i might try the ruby and the woodrow and see how that sounds as well Anyways, let me know your thoughts on these new Universal Audio pedals and let me know if this video was helpful for you. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments below and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks, have a good one.